On this lesson is going to look at why the Spanish hated Elizabeth. So for our starter today, we'll do a quick recap. Can anyone remember what religion Elizabeth was? Uh, and can anyone quickly Google what religion Spain still is now? And then bonus point, if anyone can explain why Spain might hate Elizabeth. So you can type that into the chat box for me as well as on your paper. That would be grand. So pause the video, date, title and task. So this lesson, you're going to hear me talk quite a lot about the difference uh, between two religions, which are Catholics and Protestants. Now, they're both different branches of Christianity. So just like you can have Sunni and Shia Islam, you have Catholics and Protestants who are Christian. So they both believe in, you know, heaven, hell, God, Jesus, the Bible, church on Sundays. But you'd think they'd get on, but actually they display their religious beliefs quite differently, and that leads to a lot of tension between the two. So Catholics believe the Pope is the head of the church. So the Pope is um, an old man, he lives in the Vatican, which is in Rome, in Italy, uh, and he is like chosen by God to tell everyone about the rules that God makes. Catholics also believe that churches should be decorated to show the love we have for God. So by decorated, I mean like gold plated stuff, uh, beautiful stained glass windows, painted statues, just like you can see in the picture below. But they also believe that the Bible and church services should be in Latin. Now, we don't really speak Latin anymore unless you're a doctor, but it's what the rich people used to speak. Um, and they believed that that was because that way only a trained person could read it, and uh, not just any old person off the street, because obviously it's the word of God. However, the problem with that is most people couldn't understand Latin. So it would be like me talking at you for a two hour lecture in ancient Greek that you wouldn't be able to understand. So you get the Protestants and they get their name because they protest against the Catholics because they don't see why any of that should happen. The Protestants believe the monarch, so the king or queen, should be head of the church because that way they'll do what suits their culture, their community, their country. I believe in some decoration, because otherwise it'd be a bit boring, but nothing excessive like the Catholic Church, because in the Bible it says money should go to the poor, not on, you know, six foot wide stained glass windows. And again, the Protestants also believe that the Bible and church services should be in English so everyone can understand it. And crucially, you don't have to rely on someone else's interpretation. If, if I was going around telling people that the way to get to heaven was to wear your left shoe on your head, then people would have believed me because they couldn't work it out for themselves. But with it being in English, they could. So those are the two uh, different branches. You are going to need to note those down because we'll be talking about them quite a lot. So just to save yourself going back through the video, just get down those points for me, please. Okay. So it's really important to note that, like I said earlier, these two branches don't get on because they believe that their way is the only way to get to heaven. Catholics believe if they don't listen to the Pope, they're going to hell. Protestants believe if they have too much decoration, they're going to hell. Like it is, and we are talking about their eternal souls. So it's really, really important to them that they know they're going to go to heaven. So this isn't, we're not just talking about what you do on a Sunday. We are talking about where your eternal soul goes forever. 
through some context now, just to make sure uh, you kind of understand what's going on at the time of Elizabeth I. So you've got England on the left and Spain on the right. England is, of course, ruled by Elizabeth I. Spain is ruled by a man called King Philip II. Elizabeth and England are Protestant, whereas Philip and Spain are Catholic. So as we've just looked at, there's already going to be some tension between the two countries anyway. Even though when Elizabeth first makes England Protestant, uh, Philip doesn't actually do anything, uh, mostly because he was previously married to Mary I, so who was Elizabeth's half-sister and Queen of England before Elizabeth. But obviously Mary dies. Now, Philip used to rule England with Mary because they were married. But when Mary dies, Philip stops controlling England. There's also that tension. Uh, and of course, to make matters worse, <laughs> uh, once Mary dies, Philip then asks Elizabeth, you know, his um, sister-in-law, to marry him. Uh, and she says no. So it's a bit Jeremy Kyle, but that's where we're at. You've got Protestant England with Elizabeth and Catholic Spain with Philip who used to be married to Mary I, previous Queen of England. So on the next slide, uh, we're going to go through nine reasons why England and Spain didn't get on. And yes, there are more than nine, um, but I couldn't fit them onto the slide. So we'll go with nine. And what you need to do is just summarise each point so you can shorten them and explain why it leads to hatred. So there's kind of two parts to each bullet point. Summarise and explain why it leads to hatred between the two countries. And if you want an extra challenge, I'd like you to think about whose fault it is that relations are so bad. Is it Elizabeth's fault or is it Philip's fault and why? So you can type that in the chat box at the end as well, that'd be great. Okay, so Philip II of Spain was married to Elizabeth's half-sister, Mary I. They did not have any children together. So when Mary died, Philip lost control of England, which he, which he had previously ruled with Mary. And it's Elizabeth that now has control. So again, summarise and explain why that leads to hatred. And you should have something about control in your sentence. Philip proposed to Elizabeth, hoping to unite their countries and sort out the religious issues. Uh, she refuses. She refuses to marry him. Elizabeth turned the country Protestant after Mary had made it Catholic. And Philip saw himself as defender of the Catholics. And he did not want Elizabeth being cruel to English Catholics. So he kept a close watch, but he didn't do anything directly at first. It is a gradual build up of tension. France is also Catholic um, and Elizabeth has got to be careful. If she angers Spain or France, they could team up and invade. Uh, and that would be a fight that England could not win. So for this one, when you're thinking about why it leads to hatred, you can think about this potential alliance. Previous wars with Spain had caused a lot of problems for England, like high taxes, unemployment and poor people wandering the land, which are known as vagabonds. Now, in comes another player, uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, completely different to Mary I. So Mary I was Queen of England um, and Elizabeth's half-sister. But Mary, Queen of Scots, is Queen of Scotland and is Elizabeth's cousin. Uh, but she's also Catholic and next in line to the English throne. So when Elizabeth dies, it'll be Mary, Queen of Scots that takes over. Now, Spain would have preferred Mary, Queen of Scots, to rule England because of her religion. And Spain actually went as far to give money and advice to groups of people who were plotting to replace Elizabeth with Mary. And when I say replace, I mean kill. And these are serious threats to Elizabeth's life and her country. 
And when Mary, Queen of Scots, was eventually executed for treason, uh, Philip realises that this is the time for direct action. There was also a war in the Netherlands between the ruling Catholics and Protestant rebels. So Spain and England were secretly supporting their own sides uh, until Elizabeth eventually has to sign a treaty that openly declares her support for the Dutch Protestants. So the countries are now in what's known as a proxy war. So they're not directly fighting each other. Um, they're kind of doing it secretly. Elizabeth sent Francis Drake, who was a privateer, which is basically a pirate, but sanctioned, like allowed by the government, to steal from the Spanish. And in just one trip, Drake steals about £200 million from the Spanish. So pretty brutal. And finally, uh, in 1588, Philip launches the Spanish Armada, which is a full-on invasion of England by boat. Now, Drake does delay the attack by burning a lot of wood used to make the ships, uh, but Philip kind of presses on anyway. The Spanish lost, um, just under half of their ships are destroyed and 20,000 soldiers are killed. So after this, attempt to literally invade England, uh, the Catholics lost support because they'd literally tried to conquer the country, which hadn't been done for 500 years since 1066, the Battle of Hastings. Okay. So make sure you've summarised each of those points and explained why it will lead to hatred. And you could think about religion, control, power, money, secrecy, anything like that. Okay, we're now going to do a teacher sir to make sure we are sticking to our normal schedule. Now, it's kind of up to you how you do this, but you're going to have to email it to us. So you can either do it on paper and take a picture and send it, or you can type it directly into an email, and I'll show you how to do that now. So all I've done here is I've gone into emails and I've selected new email. And then it's at this part where it says to that you're going to put either my email address or Mr. Ferguson's email address, depending who your teacher is. You know, don't send it to me if I don't teach you and vice versa. Your subject um, it needs to have your full name, your class code and just the phrase teacher, sir. And then it's in this bit underneath. Uh, that you type your answer or you can upload a document using that paperclip uh, button that says attach at the top. You can, you can upload a picture that way. So this is what your teacher sir is going to be about. We are asking you to describe relations between England and Spain. Now this is actually a five mark GCSE question but it's actually quite easy. All you need is five sentences about the relationship. So was it good? Was it bad? Did it change? Anything like that. You need to include the words in blue below. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous, there's a challenge word in green. So you need to include those words and at least three points that are well explained from today's lesson. So I've given you a sentence start at the bottom. The relationship between the English and the Spanish was, and then I need five sentences with at least three points that you have just written down. And then that must be emailed to myself or Mr. Ferguson. So if you've still got time at the end of the lesson, uh, I would just like to talk you through the Spanish Armada, which was, uh, like I said earlier, the massive attempted invasion of England using boats. But Elizabeth gives this really, really cool speech. So they have kind of the first half of the battle uh, and it's not going so well for the English. So Elizabeth goes herself to the battlefield which is very rare for a female, um, even a queen, they tend to be kept back. But she goes to her troops to give this speech. 
you need to think about why. You know, halfway through a battle that's not going particularly well, what is the purpose of her talking to the soldiers herself? You've now got about five minutes to write your own speech. So think about what's happened. Think about what will happen. Think about why England are going to win. You know, are they are the English brave? What are they fighting for? Why are the Spanish evil? And if you can, try and put some facts in from this lesson. And remember, like, be in the moment. Be really, really emotive. You are the strong Queen of England leading your troops to battle. What will you say to them? Let's see what Elizabeth actually says. We have been persuaded by some that are careful of our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear. I have always so behaved myself that under God, I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal hearts and good will of my subjects. And therefore I am come amongst you, as you see at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the midst and heat of the battle to live and die amongst you all, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom and my people, my honour and my blood, even in the dust. So that's a really, really famous speech where Elizabeth talks about living and dying amongst her people to protect them. Very, very strong wording. And of course, to finish it all off, uh, don't forget the show my homework quiz. Bye.